Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Tudorly Test Prep. Today we will be going over lesson number 14 on how to use Desmos for the digital SAT math, the slider. Let's get started. So if you guys remember, in one of my earlier videos, I went over how to find how many solutions with a question that did not have answer choices, but I manufactured answer choices to show you how to guess and check. Well, there's actually a way in Desmos to solve questions that you don't have answer choices with, and it's called the slider. Now, um, we don't have, it, it's not foolproof, okay? This is not a perfect way. I'm, I might not do a perfect job showcasing it, but if you're stuck on a tricky question, it is certainly better than nothing, and it gives you a fighting chance, even if you don't know what to do on certain questions. So let's take a look at this one. So we've got 2y equals c, and we've got y equals negative 2x squared plus 9x. And it tells us that it this line intersects the parabola at exactly one point. In other words, there's one solution. So we're going to type in c equals and um, it's going to give us an option. Let me just put like five or something to add a slider. And it kind of does it automatically. And this is really great. So look, I can now change what C is and the line will change accordingly. And if you wanted to, um, you could play a little animation and try to use that to find where the answer is too. So you just click on the play button and you can press pause to stop that. Now I'm kind of noticing, okay, so my um, if I want one solution, I want the line to kind of be up there, just, just kind of grazing the parabola. So I'm going to make the range, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to make the range, let's say more like, 5 to 25 and I'm going to make this step um, I'm going to I'm not going to put a step step just tells you how often it goes for the animation and you can kind of see I'm getting closer to the answer right I'm now kind of closer in that range let me stop here it kind of looks like the answer is between somewhere between 18 and like 22 so why don't I change the bounds again 18 to 22 And I see, oh, wait a minute, it's probably, let me zoom in a little bit. Zoom in a little bit more. Oh, I'm not quite tight touching the edge, right? Oh, I went too far. If I'm up here, see if I click on it, it doesn't snap. Oh, if I make it 20.25 and I click, it gives me one solution. So the answer is C equals 20.25. Wow, so was this the best way to do this question? Probably not. I, I think doing this question genuinely using either like the discriminant or just like your knowledge of how parabolas and horizontal lines work. It's probably much easier. And then what I would do is I would do it out on my scratch paper and then I would check using Desmos. But still, this gets the point across. You now know what a slider is. And guys, I would go in before you start using this for questions, play around with this, like change the bounds by clicking on them change the step size of your animation. Like see how choppy the animation is if I make the step size one. But then if I make the step size, if I clear it or if I make it 0.01 or something, it becomes much smoother. Um, a lot of times SAT questions, the answer is like a whole number or it ends in like 0.5. Um, so maybe like a step size of 0.5 or one would be good. Um, you can also change the speed of the animation. You click on this thing down here, animation properties, and you can change tons of stuff. Um, I don't know why you would want to make it faster, but you could make it slower. 
And then you could even just like press pause when you get close to the answer. So watch. I'm going to get really close to the answer. Let me see if I can time it. Oh, there we go. Right on it. Okay. So hopefully you guys have at least some idea now. Let's do another one. So why don't you pause this video, try this one yourself, see if you can figure out what to do. All right, so 4x minus 6y equals 10y plus 2. And then ty equals 1 half plus 2x. And it says, if I press enter, it'll just automatically add the slider. I didn't need to click on add slider. And it says that this system is a linear system, as you guys can tell. And we want to find what T is if it has no solution. So that means they're parallel lines. So we need to pick a T that gives us parallel lines. So let's look. Uh, nope. Let me move T. Okay, see, it's kind of rotating somewhere around there. I can't really tell, maybe between six and eight. Let me change it, the bounds to six to eight. And then let me also zoom in. And again, I'm not really sure if I'm capturing it. Uh, I can't really tell. It's probably not there, right? It's probably closer to there. Let me do seven to nine or 10 or something. And I see, hmm, kind of tough to tell. Why don't I do, why don't I take a bit of a gamble and rely on the fact that many SAT questions are whole numbers or end in 0.5. If I look at all these, it kind of looks like eight is the best answer. See how it looks very, very straight and it looks like they're not gonna cross. And sure enough, if you go around all over, it's not gonna cross anywhere. And eight is the answer. Again, guys, this isn't gonna be a perfect, you still need to put in the time to learn the concepts behind these questions. You can check those out in my other videos, but this isn't going to be foolproof. It's not going to work every time. You're not always going to be able to figure out the answer perfectly. But you see, if you play around with the slider, and then once you go, oh, it's like between 5 and 10, and then you can change the bounds and kind of get closer and closer and closer. And um, I, I would only really use this if you were really stuck on a question or you knew doing it by hand was going to take you too long, something like that. So hopefully that one makes sense. Um, very good. Let's do one more. Okay, pause this video and see if you can do it. All right, so let's type this in. 48x minus 72y equals 30y plus 24. And remember, guys, ry equals 1 6. The free response, the student-produced responses, they can have negative answers now. So you can't just assume that the answer is going to be positive when you're making your slider, unless they tell you it's positive. It says add slider, you could click on that, but I'm just gonna press enter and it makes me a slider. And once again, we wanna find R if the system has no solution. So we once again want the lines to be parallel. And if I bounce around here, um, if I bounce around here, I can't get no solution, right? So my answer probably isn't between negative 10 to 10. They're not parallel anywhere. So I'm going to widen my window a little bit. I'm going to do negative 50 to 50. And you can press tab to quickly skip to the next guys here. And OK, that doesn't give me no solution. Let me go this way. Oh, that gives me no solution. That looks really close. It kind of looks like 
It's between negative 30 and like negative 36. See how it tilted? They started tilting the other way. So why don't I change it to negative 36? Remember, that's the smaller one. To negative 30. And for some reason, R is a special letter on Desmos. So it's not letting me do an, an animation. That's not really a big deal to me. Actually, you know what it is. I'm going to change it to, how about we change it to A. Okay, great. So let's see. Uh, kind of hard to tell. Somewhere in the middle here. Why don't we again look at it with a step of one. Let's hope the answer is a whole number. To me, it kind of looks like 33 or 34, negative 33 or negative 34. Um, if I pause it at negative 33, though, you can see they, as you zoom out, it's kind of hard to tell, but they just kind they start to get closer together. That means they're going to cross. Let's try negative 34. Oh, there we go. Perfectly parallel. You see, they're not getting closer at either edge, so. They are never going to cross, no matter where you go. They're not getting any closer. So the answer to this guy is negative 34. OK, guys, um, I hope you found this helpful. This is definitely the hardest thing to implement that I've gone over so far because it's very situational, and it actually takes a lot of thinking and playing around with, right? So I highly recommend you go into Desmos and type in a constant like a, like type in like y equals two X plus a or something, or, you know, some kind of equation and then play around with the slider with a and just, and just try to see what happens as you move the slider and play around with the animations and certainly play around with changing the bounds of the slider and the step size of the slider, because that is going to be really pivotal to solving questions. Again, like you probably want to start with a step of one. And then if that's not getting you your answer, make it smaller, like make it 0.5 or 0.25 or something like that. If the answer is a really messy fraction, like five sevenths or something, you're going to have a hard time figuring it out. But if it is a nice like terminating decimal or a nice like um, whole number, um, you probably can solve a fair amount of questions using this method. Okay, that completes the lesson. Please like and subscribe for more digital SAT math content. If you are interested in my tutoring services, the link to my website will be in the description. I tutor all sections of the SAT and all math subjects from about seventh grade to AP slash early college level. Thanks for stopping by and good luck studying.